Hello, Derek. Hello, Lisa. Now, I know who you are, but uh, to people listening or watching, what do you do? I know you wear a few different hats. You're a pilot with Cargo Lux, but besides that, you are also... I'm also the um, executive or general secretary of the uh, Luxembourg Airline Pilots Association, the ALPL. Now, people in Luxembourg will be very aware that Cargo Lux have been incredibly busy, whilst Lux Air Pilots are grounded at the moment. So in your capacity with the, the association looking after all of the pilots, how is the overview across all of the pilots here in Luxembourg? Well, for us, as, uh, we are a relatively uh, small association, a pilot association in Europe, and we are faced with the extremes of the present situation. On one hand, uh, we have um, our colleagues, our members flying uh, for the national flag carrier for Lux Air, and they're all grounded. Uh, the aircraft are more or less all on the ground, so they do zero flying. They're not flying at all. On on the other hand, we have um, the cargo locks pilots, and they fly um, at maximum capacity. So um, at the moment, just to cope with the demand to keep um, the transport system into Luxembourg, out of Luxembourg, but also globally running with the high demand of air freight, um, our members volunteer to fly in the off days and the vacation days. Some of them are... Uh, on the route on flights for a very long time. So that's a big difference would be seen within our association. We have some colleagues, uh, those flying for cargo lux, working at the maximum capacity what's possible, while others, they can do nothing at the moment because there's absolutely no passenger flying. And just thinking about cargo lux, many people will have seen the planes in Luxembourg Airport in Findel, uh, but they might not be aware of what you do. And as you say, there's a few points here. First of all, can you give us some examples of what you carry uh, at the present time? And also then just describe the story of, of how long you're flying for, because I know you're having to reroute to maximize journeys to avoid stopping in numbers of places. Well, of course, the, a lot of things uh, apparently to be carried, and uh, that's something. That's a question you would have to ask to the airline itself. Of course, a lot of things are directly related to the um, present um, COVID-19 crisis, and what we see, we fly all around the globe. And what happened the past uh, couple of weeks as uh, the um, pandemic developed globally, we saw it shifting and. Um, different countries um, impose different restrictions for the operations and for people getting into the country. And these restrictions also affect uh, flight crew members, um, especially, you know, if you're, it doesn't matter if you're uh, flying passenger aircraft or if you fly cargo aircraft. So there are different restrictions which made, make it um, really difficult for the airline to schedule the, the flying of the, the aircraft and to schedule the, um, the pilots itself. So we see a lot of restrictions like we have places where the pilots, uh, the crew members are not allowed to leave a hotel itself or even in, in one location, they're even not allowed to leave the hotel room while they're laying over there during their crew rest period. And then this could be up to three days. So they're confined with a little hotel room. And that's what we all have to take up as pilots to keep the system running, to haul these important goods throughout the, around the globe and bring them into Luxembourg. So to just recap, you're telling me that uh, for Cargo Lux pilots, uh, we know that you're helping massively with the COVID crisis globally. You've seen it as it's transferred its way around the world and you are having to reroute many of the schedules. I know that many of your pilots don't actually live in Luxembourg, so I imagine you're having to stay here, not go home to your families. And then when you actually do travel, you're having to be locked in hotel rooms or hotels without any access to fresh air. Yeah, that, that's the case. As you just mentioned, we have uh, many colleagues who live don't live in Luxembourg itself. Uh, many are just living in Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, some live in France, but we have others who live for, uh, further apart being in Switzerland or Austria, and they have a um, difficult time to get back to Luxembourg. So we have um, pilots who volunteered uh, to stay around in Luxembourg to be uh, kept flying globally, uh, because if they would go back to their home country, it would be very difficult for them to get back to Luxembourg because Either they are um, put in quarantine or self-isolation when they are at their home country, or it becomes incredibly difficult to get to Luxembourg because there are um, hardly any um, airlines flying into Luxembourg at this time, 
other than cargo airlines. And it's very difficult to get to Luxembourg if you have uh, countries like Belgium or France, where you have a, a very strict curfew that also restricts uh, traveling of foreigners. Do you feel proud that you can help out at this time of need? Well, um, I'm very proud to report that the vast majority, nearly all of our members operating for cargo locks are very proud um, to keep the system running um, and to do what um, is our part in this, to fly this aircraft, to get the needed supplies to Luxembourg, but also to provide the very important air cargo uh, delivery throughout the globe. And when you see your colleagues from Luxair not being able to fly, do you feel jealous that they're getting paid for being grounded or could they help you in any capacity? Well, for me, and um, I'm, I can say I speak for all pilots, that's the saddest thing we can see as pilots if a fleet is grounded and if our colleagues at Luxair are grounded as well because they're not flying. Nobody is jealous. We all are pilots. We love what we do. And, um, you know, it's, it's really sad to see that they're grounded. So there is nothing that they are sitting on the ground while being paid. It's also important. It's not a full pay. So they um, take, uh, as it develops, a certainly a significant pay cut. And for your extra work and working on days off and vacations and not being able to return to your families as cargo lux pilots, are you being paid extra for this? No, we are just um, remunerated, compensated according to to our collective work agreement, uh, and that's all what you know the majority of the pilots want. The for us, it's it's important that what we as pilot pop, uh, group pop, um, contribute in these times need just not to be forgotten in the time that comes after this crisis. It's only to be recognized, and that's the important thing. Nobody is asking for more money, more compensation. We do what needs to be done. We are paid for it anyway, and we are more than happy to contribute and provide uh, and, and do our fair share in this, because we are all in this together. Absolutely. The hashtag, we are all in this together in every way. Now, you have an incredibly unique vantage point as pilots. It is literally global. It is literally on top of our world, our atmosphere. How have you seen things develop as you've crossed continents and countries? And you recently mentioned before we started recording that you were in Dubai. And whilst you were there, there was a curfew lockdown. Um, Tell us about your experience of different countries, how they've dealt with it, and who you think have dealt with it the best. Well, it's very different. You see that um, the different countries, depending or on their legal system, on their political system, they react different. Um, like I've just been to the um, UAE, and they just introduced out of out of the blue a night curfew, a complete night curfew for uh, the entire country. And then, of course, you land and you're just informed, and then you have you know, to deal with this. And you see how different countries um, follow different rules. And it's, it's um, of course, for us living in, in a free country like Luxembourg, we used a lot of freedoms over the years. And I have never seen anything else than the freedom we have been used to until a couple of days or weeks ago. And now it's a, a, bit, a bit restriction. Um, it's hard to say which uh, country deals best with the situation because they're all different, different aspects, different political systems, different societies. So that's hard to say. Um, what I noticed as a pilot, like many others uh, I talked to over the past uh, couple of days or weeks, what we have seen is an incredible reduction in flights when we fly, when we operate. So it could be that we fly from Luxembourg to Dubai and or back. And actually on the flight back I operated, I heard four other aircraft on the radio frequencies. And that's something I have never seen in my more than 20 years in, in, in the airline industry, working as a commercial pilot for airlines. I've never seen something like this. And that's really strange. And it becomes also scary. And if you go to a place like Dubai, where you have one of these big uh, globally operating airlines operating the largest fleet of Airbus A380 aircraft. And if you see the entire fleet grounded, sitting on a single airport, that's really something um, significant. 
uh, it's saddening and it's also scary. But when we think about Dubai, it is, as you said, one of the hubs uh, for for international travel. I have a friend who's a pilot in the in the US. And he said so many airplanes uh, grounded at the moment that they're sitting on the runway because there's nowhere else for them to go. Um, so how are you even operating? How are you even landing in some of these places? Well, the, the runways um, are usually free. So what you see is, um, because there are not enough parking spots, enough parking positions for all these aircraft being on the ground at the same time at the very same airport, uh, what they use is they use all the parking spots. They use all the taxiways to park the aircraft. So they parked one after another. It's a long string. You see um, large aircrafts like A380s or Boeing 777s parked. And when you taxi in and out, operating a cargo flight, for example, you pass a long line of aircraft sitting on the ground. And believe me, for a pilot, that's a really sad view. Just coming to the inside of an aircraft, uh, you have the air in a sealed area. How are you looking after your own hygiene in this crisis? Well, there's the, the, the typical recommendation um, everybody received, um, like uh, sanitizing, disinfection, um, social distancing, which is something that's, of course, if we sit there as a flight crew side by side, that's rather difficult, but um, <laughs> impossible. I would have thought nearly impossible. What we have strict <laughs> rules and 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 uh, guidance provided by the operators and uh, the World Health or Health Organization, um, how to deal with people coming on board when we are on ground, while we uh, do the turnarounds, prepare for the flights, um, how to deal with. Um, um, all these people that are needed to keep an airline running. It's, you know, the pilots are just there to operate the, this aircraft. Yeah? So we are on the um, front end of everything. But there's a huge team behind it and they all, you know, they all need to interact in some way, which becomes now very difficult with this social distancing, the hygiene, hygiene rules. And they all apply, um, applied as much as is possible and it works quite nicely just to prevent that we spread this uh, the virus amongst you know this the, an airline yeah which is very um very difficult to do but um, it looks like um, it's it's quite effective and just thinking about that back staff that you mention there are hundreds thousands in some airports of people who look after an assortment of things how are they even uh, getting to work? I mean, is it a skeleton staff now of ground staff that you have working in all of these international airports? Well, it um, it depends. It's really empty if you if you go to work, and often um, we have to pass a, a pa passenger terminal, even in Luxembourg. When we report for for a flight, we check in at, at the passenger terminal, and it's just deserted. It's empty. Of course, you have people sitting there, one or two people uh, on a desk, and maybe you see some uh, people at the information desk, and that's it. It's it's empty. So whatever is done, um, you know, you only see the absolute necessary stuff. And how do you feel this will affect the future of flying in the near term future? So just looking at the next six months, have you got any feeling of what could come? Um, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. It depends how long um, this crisis in this magnitude with all this lockdowns, shutdowns um, will take. And then it will see how, you know, a spool up of the economy is eventually taking place, and it's it's quite early. It's it's um, and I'm not um, an expert when it comes to the airline industry and the economy um, economic side of it, um, but um, there will be a huge impact. Uh, and uh, for, uh, to agree with the president of the European Cockpit Association, um, our industry will most likely look different after the crisis than it looked before. Well, we're already seeing that with some airlines folding or needing to be bailed out. Uh, how do you feel about that? I know you're not an expert in the economic side of the airlines, but obviously there are many airlines that will not be able to cope without passengers. It's different for cargo lux, but but for passenger airlines. Um, yes, for them, you know, if, if nobody wants to fly, 
Um, well, nobody, nobody can fly. Nobody can fly. Nobody wants to fly eventually. Uh, it's very difficult for them. And if the passenger demand is not there after the crisis, it will take um, a certain time to, to spool it up. And of course, this is a huge um, hit for these airlines. Um, what we have all to be aware of, um, and that's a, like we talk about Luxembourg being a relatively small uh, country in the middle of Europe, which is um, quite has a lot of importance for Europe for you know what we do in the EU. Um, there are other airlines, not in Luxembourg, but the, the tendency and the fear we have is that they take advantage of the situation and um, that's something we have to stop because uh, we cannot accept the decline in, in working conditions um, after the crisis just because someone takes advantage of the crisis itself that's just not um, acceptable Dirk, I think you've covered a lot of areas with us here. I know that on behalf of everybody in Luxembourg, we thank you, the pilots, the cargo lux pilots specifically, but also your colleagues at Luxair who might be feeling a little bit sad that they can't fly and their hands are tied at the moment. Are there any final thoughts you'd like to part with us? Well, um, the pilots, especially the the, car, uh, the cargo pilots, is at this time um, they're proud what they do. They try to do the best to help overcome the crisis. Um, we are not heroes. Uh, we are just small little workers within the entire uh, system. We are not doctors. We are not nurses. Um, we just do our best. Thank you so much, Derek.